in the Bible that talk about peace. The first I think about is in John chapter 14 and verse number 27. We get a promise from the Lord Jesus Christ about peace when he says this, peace I leave with you. He's talking to the disciples. Now listen, let's set the context. He's telling the disciples, look guys, I am leaving you. I'm going away. And they're like, they're totally distraught. Can you imagine after three and a half years of walking with Jesus, he tells you, as he's already told you multiple times, the time is almost here for me to leave you. It would be crushing, would it not? So they're distraught, and he said, listen, I'm, I'm going away. He said, but listen, when I leave, I'm leaving with you something that's going to be just like I was here. He said, peace I leave with you. He said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, never, neither let it be afraid. Now, interesting enough, listen closely, because this is going, I'm trying to build this thing in to a recipe that you'll identify and be able to employ in your life. When Christ is talking to the disciples here in John chapter 14 and he talks about the peace he's leaving them, he follows it up talking to them about the Holy Spirit of God. And he teaches them this, look, if I don't go away, he can't come. But if he comes, it's going to be better even than me being here with you. But here's why. Because I can only be in person with a certain number of you. But if I bring the Holy Spirit or when he comes on the scene for his ministry, he'll fill all believers, all places, and be with you as a friend that sticketh closer than a brother and never leave you all your days. It's like everybody in the world then has a companion side by side just like Jesus. Now, if you're one of the 12, him going away meant a little bit different than if you were the guy four towns over that didn't get to spend time with him. But when he tells them this promise of peace, hey, I'm leaving, but get, I got a better plan. And can I say this? Everywhere we're carrying anxiety unnecessarily, God's got a better plan. God's got a better plan. He's got a better, he's got a better word on that, right? We find out next in the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3, about the presence of peace. Notice what he said there in your Bible. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, here comes an addendum. You ready? Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. <laughs> that should give you and I a real good hint about where peace either takes place or is robbed. You ready? Right here. Right here. Do you know two people can get the same information and affect them totally different? I'm serious. It's all about how it's processed here. Now, for an unbeliever who doesn't know Christ as Savior, they should not be equipped well enough when receiving information maybe that was heartbreaking, maybe of a physical nature about their health, to have any information up here to comfort them in time. But a child of God, on the other hand, should or can have information that they... Pro what happens if we, tonight after church, we get home and the headlines are going off on social media and on the news everywhere else that they already know tomorrow the economy in America is going to crash and that we are getting ready to experience our own Great Depression again. Let me ask you a question. How do you think that's going to affect or should affect the believer and the non-believer? Based on the information we both have. I mentioned this earlier, but if, I, if, if I've been seeking the Lord and His righteousness first, I got a promise. That, that food and raiment business, he said, uh, I got that covered. <laughs> so I guess we would just kind of have to walk into tomorrow like this. I guess we're going to test him. <laughs> I guess we're just going to, I guess we're going to test me. I mean, I've said for years I believe it. Let's test it. I mean, they say you don't really know if you believe something until you got to live it, <laughs> right? And we would see if the years of faithfulness paid off and he, in ways only he can, in which we have story after story in the Scriptures how God comes through in the most impossible of seasons and situations. But he says this, look, I'm going to tell you right now that, that I can keep you in perfect peace if you'll keep your mind right, if you'll keep your mind on me and it gives the incl inclination that if you won't look as much at the circumstances around you as the God above you, then in the middle of whatever comes your way, you can have peace and not be overwhelmed with anxiety. That moves us to Colossians 3.15 where we find out what I call the possibility of peace. Notice what the Lord said here. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. 
Now, now, why did he not say, I'm going to make the peace of God rule in your heart? Because can I tell you this about peace? This is a secret about peace. You hold the key that unlocks whether or not it will be there or want. You understand me? Peace is something you have to let rule. Because you can, everybody gets things in their life that gives or could bring them anxiety. And you're going to do one of two things. You're going to go to the Word of God and find out God's stand or position on it and put your trust in that and focus on that. Or you're going to ignore that and just let anxiety become your taskmaster. And he said, I'll tell you what will happen if you'll let me. He said, instead of, instead of this thing of anxiety dominating you uh, in your life, he said, I'll tell you what, if you'll just trust me, he said, I'll, I'll make sure that peace rules in your heart. Now, you do realize if you could bottle peace, you could put any price tag you want on it and get it. But God's made it to where it can't be bought with man's money. It has to come by the... By, by what man decides to put his faith, confidence, trust, and stock in. And a wise man would let God be where he puts all of his confidence, not in himself and especially not in the systems of this world. Now understand this about peace as well. According to Romans 12, 18, there is a pursuit of peace. He said, if it be possible as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men, right? In, in other words, you'd have to try. And some people make it hard, don't they? <laughs> Sometimes I make it hard, <laughs> Right? But you got to pursue it. If you don't want it, you'll never have it. You, you know, but if you were to talk to people whose lives were just, I mean, a constant wreck, they'd say, man, all I want in life is peace. Well, quit acting that way and saying those things. <laughs> right? If, you ain't, if, you ain't, if the way you're acting ain't going to promote peace and the things you're saying ain't going to bring peace, then stop it. And peace may come. You know? Quit making dumb decisions and everything around you won't crumble. Right? Peace is something you pursue. It don't just come down like pixie dust from the sky. But then you also find this, lastly, you find in Matthew 5, 9, what I call the reward for peace. He said, blessed are the what? Peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. That word blessed means to be happy. In other words, can I say this right here? Boy, if you want a happy life, peace should be one of the most, most, most uh, coveted or sought after things that you look for in your personal life, in your relationships with your God. I mean, all the way around. And I don't know about you, but it's something I want. Now, can I just give a disclaimer on that statement? And until you know the one who gives peace, you won't have any. The Bible is extremely clear that peace first starts in a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why in the book of Romans chapter 5 and verse number 1, the Word of God says this, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's clear in the book of Romans chapter 1 that those, who do not know, not know, those that do not know God have not known peace. And can I say this? I had no peace in my life, not of any longevity at all, until September the 6th of 1998 when I got born again by the good grace of God. And on that day I was introduced to peace and there have been good seasons since then where I've been able to live in the same kind of peace that God granted to me when he saved me. Now can I tell you this? I searched for peace before I got saved. Searched for it in money. Found it to be short lived. I searched for it in the bottle. Found that to be short lived. I searched for it a lot of places. And it would constantly elude me. And then I met him. <laughs> 